Welcome back to Coding with Kiskit Runtime. I'm your host, Nick Braun. In this video, we'll explore error suppression and error mitigation techniques with Kiskit Runtime. We'll look at all the knobs and levels we can play with by considering the same expectation value problem from episode four, the observable and onsots from my chemist friends. From friends, import, retrieve, observable, and onsots. Then obs, qc, and params equal retrieve, observable, and onsots. Here's the observable already in qubit form, represented by strings of four poly operators weighted by coefficients. Here's our onsots, consisting of three entanglers specified by three parameters. And the parameters my friends found corresponding to the ground state of the molecule. First, let's find the exact ground state energy with the state vector simulator by using the estimator base class from Kiska Terra, as we also did in the previous episode. From kiskit.primitives import estimator, instantiate the estimator by doing estimator equals estimator, and then run the state vector simulator by doing estimator.run circuits equals QC, observables equals obs, and parameter values equal params, and retrieve our result, job.result. We see we have an expectation of minus 14.6 for the ground state energy, which is close to minus 14.5 we measured in a previous episode. Let's append our results to a list so we can compare different error suppression and mitigation strategies. Results equals empty list results.append job.result.values0. Now we return to running the calculation on real quantum hardware. Let's instantiate our options and set our optimization level to 0. This is similar to the transpilation setting of optimization level. From Qiskit IBM runtime import options. Instantiate with options equals options. And we'll set options dot optimization level equals zero. Now let's instantiate our runtime service and retrieve IBM Lagos as our backend. From Qiskit IBM runtime import Qiskit Runtime service session estimator. Service equals Qiskit runtime service and backend equals service dot get backend IBM logos. And we then run the estimator now with the lowest level of optimization with session service equals service, backend equals backend as session. Instantiate the estimator equals estimator with the specified options. Options equals options. And then run. Job equals estimator dot run circuits equals QC observables equals obs, and parameter values equal params. And retrieve our result when ready, job.result. And this time we got an energy value of minus 14.2. Let's append that value to our results. results.append 
append job.result.values, zero. Now let's add some error suppression. Values of optimization level greater than zero will add dynamical decoupling to suppress dephasing. You can check out this video of me discussing dynamical decoupling. Error suppression, unlike error mitigation, only has classical overhead that takes place during the transpilation of the circuit. Options.optimization level equals two. We can also change transpilation options, for example. Options transpilation dot layout method equals saber. We can see all the knobs that we can tune by printing out the options. Lots of them. Let's run this error suppress circuit on the hardware with session service equals service, back end equals back end as session, estimator equals estimator, now with our new options, and then we run the job with job equals estimator dot run parameter values equal params. We can retrieve our result when ready, job dot result, and we have a value of minus 14.5. And let's append that value to our results. Results.append job.result.values0. Resilience describes the level of error mitigation applied to a circuit. Here it is important to distinguish between modeled and model-free techniques. Model-free error mitigation has a small amount of overhead because the noise is treated the same, which applies well to measurement error mitigation. Modeled error, such as zero noise extrapolation, scales with the number of noise factors, and the model is essentially the extrapolation method. Probabilistic error cancellation attempts to learn and invert a sparse noise model and scales exponentially in sampling overhead for a given accuracy. For this reason, it is recommended to test drive this technique with short depth circuits to get a feel for the overhead. Let's take a look at each technique. Options.optimization level equals zero. That's no error mitigation. And what we've been doing. Let's move on. Optimization level one includes measurement error mitigation, which is a technique with double the overhead in quantum computations. It uses one of two similar methods depending on the primitive being run. If using the sampler, matrix-free measurement mitigation is used. Alternatively, when employing the estimator, twirled readout error extinction also called T-Rex, is used. Links for how these work are provided in the description. Options.resilience level equal one for measurement error mitigation with session service equals service, backend equals backend, and then we can run the job. Job equals estimator dot run. And when it's ready, we can retrieve our results job.result, and we get about minus 14.5 for our ground state energy. Let's append the value to our results. Results.append job.result.values0. For resilience level 2, zero noise extrapolation, or Z and E, seeks to reduce error by doing the exact opposite. By controllably adding error to the circuits being run, Given a model of how the error scales, one can extrapolate to the zero noise case. This is useful for estimator quantities where expectation values may be closer to the true value, but still in a quantum state orthogonal to the correct solution. Here, the user is still responsible for specifying details about the extrapolation, the details of which are specified in the links below. For example, a noise factor of one is just the regular circuit and higher values of the noise factor scale the incoherent noise by changing the way that the final state of the circuit is achieved. The zero value of the noise is extrapolated using a polynomial or other functional form. In our case, we'll assume the noise is linear. The quantum computation overhead of this technique scales linearly in the number of noise factors provided. Options.resilience level equals two turns on zero noise extrapolation. Options.resilience.noiseAmplifier equals two 
qubit amplifier because that's where most of the noise is. Options.resilience.noise factors. We'll choose one for the normal circuit and 1.2 and 1.5. Options.resilience.extrapolator equals linear extrapolator as we assume the noise is linear. Then with session service equals service, backend equals backend, is instantiated with our options, and we can run the job. And when it's ready, we can retrieve our results, job.result. For this one, we got closer to the exact value of minus 14.6. Let's append that value to our results. Results.append job.result.values0. Optimization level 3 invokes probabilistic error cancellation. PEC has a quantum computational overhead that scales exponentially in the number of layers, which are the time slices of simultaneous qubit operations. For this reason, it is recommended to try this technique out on smaller circuits to get a feel for the extra time of quantum computation. PEC also allows us to specify a callback in the options environment, which is useful to see how it performs. From date time import date time. We'll define our callback as interim results callback with the job ID and the result. Then we'll timestamp it with date time dot now and print it out now. Callback result and a new line. We'll set optimization level to zero in order to define the time slices. Options dot optimization level equals zero. And we'll set the number of shots to be less. Options dot execution dot shots equals 300. And finally, we'll set our callback. Options dot environment dot callback equals interim results callback. Okay, now we turn on PEC with options.resilience level equals three. And as usual, with session service equals service backend equals backend. As we run with PEC, we see the callback information coming in. And when it's ready, we can retrieve our results. Job.result. Here we can see we got an energy of minus 15, which is actually a little bit lower than the exact value. We also have information about the running of PEC here. Let's add this value to our results. Results.append job.result.values0. Now we can compare mitigation strategies by seeing how close to the ground state energy we arrive at. Import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt, and then plt dot plot range the length of our results minus one for the exact results, neglecting the first one, line style equals empty, and marker equals round. And then the exact plt.plot 0 to length of results minus 1 results 0, which is the exact results 0. And then we'll do a dotted line, a dashed line. X label will be mitigation strategy given by the order we did it in.
And the Y label will be energy of our molecule. Now that we have this plot, we can see that the modularity of Qiskit runtime allows this kind of apples to apples comparison between mitigation strategies. Zero here, our first try with no mitigation is up here, and we can see that our fourth try with Z and E gets quite close to the exact ground state energy with only multiplicative overhead in quantum resources. But of course, different strategies will fare better for different applications and with different cost in quantum resources, so it's a good idea to get familiar with them before trying on difficult problems. In this video, we compared different error suppression and error mitigation strategies as applied to a molecular energy problem using the estimator primitive. In the next video, we explore an algorithm that uses both the sampler and estimator in the same session. Thanks for watching. See you then.